have baby chickens. Yay! Look at it. Look how cute. Oh, it is about 48 hours old, if that. Um, this little guy, oh, that is so cute. So obviously these didn't come out of the eggs that are being uh, put in the incubator on the hatch along, which we're only on day six of. These little guys, I lucked out very much. I've been calling my local tractor supply place um, every morning for about the last week and a half to find out when they were going to get another shipment of birds in to be ready. And when I called them this morning, I lucked out. They had just gotten a huge shipment in of Isa Browns, which they are an egg laying hybrid. They're considered the best egg layers of any breed of chicken. They are a hybrid between Rhode Island Reds and Rhode Island Whites, and they lay uh, up to 320 eggs a year. Uh, the average is about 300, which is pretty amazing if you realize that there's only 365 days a year. So we've got 10 of these little guys to help supplement. So my goal is about to have 20 birds, and we're at about 14 uh, developing eggs right now, but it's still too early by any degree to tell what kind of um, hatch success we're going to have, what kind of hatch rate. Again, with them being shipped eggs, I'm just mentally and emotionally prepared for it to be lower. So I've got 10 of these little guys to supplement it, and... At the absolute, you know, most case scenario, we'll have 24 chickens. But we've got plenty of space, and that's well planned for for that. So, all right, let's say you've gotten yourself lucky. You've gotten yourself some baby chicks. Uh, your local tractor supply or a chicken keeper, or you've ordered them online. Now you need to know how to take care of the little baby chickens. And that's what we'll be talking about in this video. So... Uh, the first thing you need to know about baby chickens is you have to have a brooder. A brooder is a container of any kind or a containment of any kind that has a heat source that provides an area of heat that has 95 degrees and that has kind of a, it's radiatingly cooler further away from it. Um, usually it's an enclosed space. Um, they're kept indoors. Now I have a big guinea pig pen coming um, that's four feet by four feet. The holes are really small in it that I'm going to be used to brood everybody up through to the point where they are fully feathered and ready to be able to be outside because Vermont has very, very severe weather. Even our warm, the nights can, in the summer here, drop down into the 50s. So they have to stay inside um, until they're fully feathered and able to insulate themselves. So I'm going to be putting everybody in that pen, um, but for now, because these guys were a surprise <laughs> that I wasn't expecting necessarily to get, um, I have a backup for the next few days, and that is a large size cat carrier. Um, I've done that before. Other people have done it quite a bit. It's very secure. It keeps the cats completely out of it. Um, and it just works very well for a temporary newborn brooder if you're kind of having to transition between uh, brand, brand new like this, which it's fine to keep them in a small space when they're just this little, and then needing them to get into something with a bit more room uh, as they get bigger. So if you're going to use this method, you're going to need a trash bag, preferably one of the heavier black ones, your container of whatever it may be. Some people, if you don't have cats, they'll use uh, the big Tupperware containers that you use the storage bins, and they'll clip a heat lamp onto the side of it to create the heat source for them, um, whatever that will be. You will need a heat source that is both sufficient to put out the 95 degree temperature um, and that it doesn't have forced air. That's really important. The chicks need to be able to regulate their body heat by getting closer and moving further away from the heat source. So you want a radiant heat source like a heat lamp. Um, I've known people who've used heating pads that just don't have the uh, automatic timers on them. There's lots of ways that it can be done. I personally, this is what I've used for pretty much everybody. This is an older, I don't even know how old it is, um, radiant coil heater. It's got very, very small slits. I always keep it on the outside of the brooder. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need some form of bedding. Um, I do not recommend using the wood chip bedding. It is a nightmare with chicks. It's absolutely awful. They kick it into everything. Um, it's horrible to clean. It's very hard to spot clean it. It's just, I've never had good luck with it. I have much better luck with hay. Um, so I have this 
Do More, by the way, I am not sponsored by them, but they are my favorite company. They put out some really high quality product um, that I've always used for all of my birds, and I've never had a problem with them, and they're at a very, very low price point, so they're great. So it's this small bit of hay. Usually, of course, once the chickens get older, I have bigger hay bales. I don't want to keep buying little things. But for now, it's more economical for me to just have the two smaller bags so that I can change out their bedding. All right, so now we're going to move the camera so I can show you guys how I'm going to set up the inside of the brooder and the food and water system that I'm going to be using in there. Okay, so first off, we've taken the plastic trash bag that I showed you guys and we've folded it um, up so that it, it fits the size of the floor in there and I'll just have you take a look inside makes it much much easier to clean and as long as you fold it well and then you cover it with the hay the chickens won't even be able to peck at it not that I've ever had a problem with that I've never had a bird peck at the uh, plastic bin liner that I use to line the bottom of the cage with. I also prefer using hay as a bedding because the chickens can kind of nestle down inside of it and make a little nest for themselves. Um, and they really can't do that with the wood chips. I just, I don't recommend them. Yeah, you can see I've made an absolute mess here. <laughs> All right, so these are the food and water containers. Now, this is a bit of an Im uh, improvisation for myself. Chickens love to knock over containers. Any chicken keeper will tell you the mental anguish and daily insanity of keeping them from putting all kinds of stuff into their water bowls and knocking over their feed bowls. It's a pain in the butt. Technically, this is designed for food, um, but I'm actually going to be using it for watering. It fits perfectly inside the cat carrier here. Um, the mouths are wide enough for them to very easily get to the water in the trough, but they're not so big that they can hop in there and drown. So I'm going to use that. It's going to be a little harder for them to kick debris into it, and it's definitely not going to be able to be something they can knock over. This right here is being used, obviously, this is the feed container. So we have um, special food that is designed specifically for growing chickens, and uh, I believe it's the same brand uh, do more as the um, the hay that I've got. Uh, I love again. I've said I'm not sponsored by them, but I, I really like the brand and uh, the I got 50 pound bag for I believe like twelve dollars. So that's I mean it's absolutely good. Just make sure that when you're buying um, any chicken feed for newborn chicks, make sure it's specifically for young chicks for growing chicks. You don't want to give them adult chicken food inside uh, the cat carrier and I'm going to just use my water pot right here to fill that up with its water. Now comes the fun part of putting all the little chickies inside their brooder. All right. Okay, so you'll have to forgive me today, guys. I don't have any makeup on. I'm just in a crappy flannel. I'm doing a lot of physical labor around today. Um, but all right, so to wrap this up and just give you kind of the simple point by point thing you need to know about getting chicks through their first five days at home, um, you want to have a nice, safe, enclosed space that is completely protected from any other pets that you may have. You want to make sure it has a nice, big, thick bed of hay. You need to provide a water container that they cannot jump inside and drown in. You need to provide them with a food container, and you need to provide them with a heat source that is not forced air. So heat lamps, heating pads, um, like this, a radiant heater that you are able to work out a system to put it further away from the bars so the chicks can't actually touch the hot metal part of the heater. Um, there's lots of different solutions, lots of different ways that people have come up with it. Um, if you have questions, concerns, want to know anything about it, I highly recommend going on to www.backyardchickens.com. They're a forum for chicken keepers. You've got people, I mean, there are hundreds of years of cumulative experience among chicken keepers on that website. Um, if you can think of it, they probably have the answer for it and have probably seen it themselves. So if you need any extra information for as far as that stuff goes, check in there. Um, like I said, I'm going to be using a guinea pig pen for my larger, uh, more permanent brooder. And we'll review that and I'll show it to you guys when it comes in. 
So thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, oh, the chicks, they're so loud. <laughs> if you like the video, please like, share, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. If you like this video, uh, please consider donating to my Patreon. Uh, it really helps. Um, I'm able to get, you know, I'm hoping to be able to at some point get a better camera. Uh, it helps me expand the website with all of my infection prevention and emergency preparation guides, which is www.trinitysurvivor.com. And I want to thank all of the people that have already donated. You guys are absolutely amazing. So we'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye-bye. Bangle -bye. camp.